Welcome to today's video, where we dive into a head-to-head -head comparison between two of the industry's heavyweights, Affinity Photo and Adobe Photoshop. Whether you're a seasoned professional or just starting out in the world of image editing, we'll explore the features, capabilities and user experience of both tools to help you make an informed decision on which one suits your creative needs best. Join us as we break down the strengths and weaknesses of Affinity Photo and Adobe Photoshop and guide you through the journey of discovering which software emerges as the ultimate editing champion. Hi guys, well in this exercise, in this video, we're going to have a look at Affinity Photo on the iPad versus Adobe Photoshop on the iPad. And there's quite a difference, I can assure you. This will include Affinity Photo iPad features, Affinity Photo iPad versus Photoshop, and Affinity Photo iPad price, and some of the other prices. There's quite some shockers in here. Now, why a comparison? I'm glad you decided to take a look at this. The perennial question seems to be, do I want to use Affinity or Adobe Photoshop? As always, it really depends on you, the user. And some people find an app to have an impenetrable and complex user interface. Others, on the other hand, find the same app brilliantly intuitive. It's always the way. Some people use both. I've got both on this iPad now. But I know one, which one I use mostly. Thus it is with Photoshop and Photo. Both have desktop versions and the files are interchangeable between the desktop and iPad versions. That is, if you've got Affinity Photo on your iPad, you can use the same files on your desktop, and the same with Photoshop, but they're not interchangeable with each other unless you export them under certain conditions. Both apps can have export in formats that the other can read, mostly PSD, and SVG if you're lucky. So let's look at the difference and similarities in some detail. First, let's have a look at Adobe Photoshop on the iPad, followed by a look at Affinity Photo on the iPad. Then I'll summarise with a direct comparison. Now this is Adobe Photoshop on the iPad, just a quick start up. And you can see the interface is fairly clean um, it comes up, I've got it on the Learn at the moment, so you can leave that on there and you can open up any of the options in the Learn um, Studio, if you want to call it that. I'm sure Photoshop calls it something different. Now, the Photoshop on the iPad is still largely under development. It hasn't been released all that long. And you would think with Photoshop having been around as long as it is, they would have been quicker with this but I'm sure they'll catch up with Affinity Photo. Now you can see it's running through some options there and it goes back to that start. Now let's have a look at Affinity Photo on the iPad. Now that one when it comes up, it comes up with the live docs. So documents you've already used are on that interface and I'm just stepping down there's the samples option on the Affinity Photo one. So you can see the layout is not the same, but it's very similar. Let's face it, there's so many, only so many things that you can do on an iPad. And I might add that I'm on an iPad mini here. Now there we go, it's loaded. Affinity loads some stuff from the internet. Now that's because I stopped it halfway through. It's got that unknown error there. That's me stopping a download in the middle of it. And it's back to there. There we go. There's the help file, a few other things, Affinity Photo, Quick Start Guide. So with both apps, you've got lots of help and lots of guides built into the system. Let's continue on. Adobe Photoshop offers a comprehensive range of features that are similar to the desktop version, including advanced layers support, selection tools, filters, and retouching capabilities. Affinity Photo provides a wide array of professional grade features like advanced retouching, layer styles, blend modes, and extensive brush 
Customization, bit of a tongue twister. Some of, and a lot of stuff there is available on the iPad. Now in the Photoshop version, there's a lot of things that aren't yet available or are only available if you pay extra money. That's good old Adobe's favorite um, trick. Now the user interface in Adobe Photoshop, it adapts its interface for touch controls, making it familiar for existing Photoshop users, but with touch friendly icons and panels. And you can see the two of them side by side. There's really not a lot of difference. Some of course, but not a lot. What can you do with the user interface? Make it easy for the user to use it. Now, Affinity Photo is designed with touch in mind, offering an intuitive and streamlined interface that's optimized for iPad use. As an aside here, Photoshop seems to assume you're going to have a keyboard attached to your iPad. Affinity Photo makes no such assumption. You can use a keyboard, it has an on-screen keyboard if you want it, but it relies and is built for touch control. Now, compatibility. Adobe Photoshop seamlessly integrates with Adobe Creative Cloud. Of course it does. Allowing for easy file sharing and synchronization with the desktop version. Well, Affinity Photo supports various file formats and offers its own iCloud storage solution, enabling cross-platform compatibility. Now, generally speaking, you'll use iCloud, but you can also use Dropbox uh, for the cloud storage. In fact, you can use nearly anything you like. If it's on your system and you're using a cloud storage solution, you can tell either of them where your files are. Adobe Photoshop, however, assumes you're going to be using Adobe Creative Cloud and you have to tell it where to go if you want it to use something else. Photoshop for performance can vary depending on the complexity of the project and the iPad specifications. So don't expect it to run on a minimum spec iPad. Affinity Photo is known for its impressive performance utilizing the iPad's hardware effectively for smooth editing, even with large files. There are very few restrictions in Affinity Photo. However, as with all software, if your device is under spec, then expect problems in both Affinity Photo and more so in Adobe Photoshop. Neither of them like under spec devices. Now pricing, this is, the, this is the big one. Adobe Photoshop requires a subscription to Adobe Creative Cloud, which might include other Adobe apps as well. Now you can have, an, a, you can have a, a registration on Adobe Creative Cloud, which doesn't require purchasing anything, but this does give you access to Adobe Photoshop on the iPad at $9.98 a month. If you want Adobe Photoshop on the iCloud to be fully configured, in other words, to have access to all of its controls and all of its devices, then you have to pay, I think it's around £19.98 per month. And that's the same in dollars. So it's $9.98 or £9.98. Somebody's forgetting about money transfer there, exchange rates. Now, Affinity Photo offers a one-time purchase cost making it more budget friendly in the long run. Well, at any time, Affinity Photo standalone is £17.99 in a, a one-off price. That's all you pay forever for upgrades or everything. Unless, of course, it changes to Affinity Photo version 6 or something like that, a complete rebuild, then, of course, you're going to be expected to pay uh, an upgrade cost. And that's fair enough. But if you're paying for Photoshop on a subscription basis, of course you get all the upgrades. But even to me, just with my terrible maths, as good as £10 a month is, is not quite the same as as good as £18 in a one-off price. Hmm, I know which one I prefer. And with Affinity Photo, you quite often see it on sale. You can also buy... Um, a global license for Affinity Photo, which allows you to use 
Affinity Photo, designer and publisher on the iPad, on the desktop, PC, Mac, just about anything. You can have more than one copy of it installed anywhere you like. You're not limited to the number of installations. If you've bought a photo, Affinity Photo for the iPad and you own six iPads, put it on all six iPads. Easy as. Now the learning curve. Users familiar with the desktop version of Adobe Photoshop will find it easier to transition, but new users might need some time to learn the interface and features. Oh yes you will. Now Affinity Photo offers a user-friendly interface and intuitive tools, making it accessible to both beginners and experienced users. If you've never used these applications before, either of them, Photoshop or Affinity Photo, a brand new user will not find them terribly easy to use, but start small. Just work on the photos in your Apple Photos, for instance, if you're on an iPad, and that's what I'm talking about here, you'll probably have Apple Photos enabled, storing all your photos on the iPad or in the cloud. Both of these apps access that so you can just open that up and be working away on your photos quite happily don't have to worry about designing things updates and supports adobe photoshop regularly updated with new features and improvements backed by adobe's extensive customer support <laughs> yes good luck with that one Affinity Photo also receives updates that bring new features and the developers provide responsive customer support. It's about the best I've ever come across. Now in summary, both Adobe Photoshop and Affinity Photo for iPad are powerful image editing tools with their own strengths. Adobe Photoshop provides familiarity for existing users and strong integration with the Creative Cloud ecosystem. On the other hand, Affinity Photo offers an intuitive interface, impressive performance, and a more cost-effective pricing model. Your choice will depend on your familiarity with the software, your specific editing needs, and of course, your budget. Now, another big question, how can we use Affinity Photo? Photo editing. Affinity Photo is designed for professional level photo editing. You can adjust exposure, colour balance and apply various filters and effects to enhance your photos. Retouching. Remove blemishes, wrinkles and other imperfections from portraits using retouching tools like the healing brush and clone stamp. Graphic design. Create great graphics, illustrations and digital paintings using advanced vector and raster tools available in Affinity Photo. HDR Imaging, merging multiple exposures to create high dynamic range images with enhanced details in both highlights and shadows. Panoramic Stitching, stitch multiple photos together to create stunning panoramic images. Layer Based Editing, utilise layers for non-destructive editing, allowing you to make changes without affecting the original image. Text and typography. Add text to your images with various typography tools and effects. Very useful. Now, how can we use Photoshop? Similar to Affinity Photoshop, to Affinity Photo, Photoshop is renowned for its photo editing capabilities, including color correction, retouching, and exposure adjustments. Graphic design. Design web graphics, banners, posters, logos and more using Photoshop's extensive set of tools. Digital art, create digital paintings, illustrations and concept art using brushes, layers and blending modes. 3D art and design, Photoshop allows you to work with 3D objects and textures, making it a tool of choice for 3D artists and designers. Web design, design website layouts and user interfaces and optimize images for web use. Video editing. Photoshop's extended version, remember, that's the keyword, extended version, includes basic video editing capabilities, enabling you to edit videos, apply filters, and add text and graphics. You'll really need some P 
powerful iPads to use that one and an increased um, subscription model. Photo manipulation. Photoshop is widely used for photo manipulation and composite creations where you can blend multiple images seamlessly. Animation, with its timeline and frame animation features, Photoshop can be used for creating simple animations and GIFs. Recall with Photoshop, if you want to use some of the extended capabilities, you will need to have an extended subscription. In summary, both Affinity Photo and Adobe Photoshop are powerful tools suitable for a wide array of creative tasks, ranging from basic photo enhancements to complex graphic design and digital art projects. Your choice between the two would depend on your specific needs, familiarity with the software perhaps, and personal preferences, and I didn't add there, budget. So, thanks for watching. I hope you find it useful. Don't for forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel because it helps me keep motivated to do more. Click on the thumbs up for a like and the bell to be reminded when new videos appear. I really appreciate it. Go ahead. Make my day. Subscribe.